Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, oh yeah, customary wristwatch check. We're wearing the uh, Seiko Monster SRP 307J1. Always got to kiss my watches. That's my trademark. Don't you take it? Okay, okay, okay. I need to uh, interrupt while I was talking. Sorry. So different version of me on a different day wearing a GMT Master, obviously, of course, since we're talking about Rolexes need to be appropriate. And I'm going to say something hopefully intelligent. So I put on my smart glasses for this. I know a lot of you guys probably feel, and it's it's been going around for a very long time, that there's it's kind of a rumor in the watch industry that there's a definitive way to tell a real versus a fake Rolex. And I hate to be the person to do this to you, but I need to break that illusion because there isn't. There is no quick and dirty list of certain points where you can check to tell definitively whether or not a watch is real or fake. The only way you can tell if a Rolex is legitimate is to become an expert on that model or take that watch to an expert and examine every single piece of that watch down to and including the movement to make sure all the pieces there make sense for that model. And there's definitely these lists and there's things you can look out for and I'm going to talk to you about all those features, well not all those, but a lot of common ones in the video coming up, but just be clear, there's no definitive way. We live in a world where there are some very scary fakes that are very, very accurate looking that can replicate a lot of common Rolex features. Even the ones I'm gonna point out to you in this video, there are some replicas that get it right. Second, there's not a rule for every single Rolex. Rolexes from the 60s versus the 70s versus the 80s versus the 90s versus the 2000s, they all have different features on them. My GMT Master is different from the current ceramic GMT Master and is, is different from the GMT Masters of the 60s and 70s. And there's things that are different. So you cannot evaluate this piece in the same way you'd evaluate a GMT Master II ceramic or just a basic GMT Master. It's different. Just as you can't say that all Rolexes should have certain features regardless because they change. Different models have different features. Different models, depending on when they were made, have different movements. They have different security features on them. And so you cannot just say, well, these features equal a real Rolex. The only way you can know you're looking at a legitimate watch is to understand that model that you're trying to buy inside and out or take it to somebody who's an absolute expert on that model and knows what belongs on that model. That said, majority of the watches out there that are replicas are not that great and a lot of the features I'm going to show you on this video and you'll see on other videos and also probably listed out all over the internet are ways you can easily or usually easily identify a, a poor quality fake. And the hope of this video is, is that by noticing these things and what to keep pay attention to is if you're out in the wild looking to spend your hard-earned money on a watch, you're going to notice something that's off and it's going to give you pause about whether or not you want to proceed with that purchase. And the rule of thumb that we always say in the watch industry, um, collectors and sellers alike, is buy the seller. Always buy the seller. Buy from somebody you trust and buy from somebody you're going to have recourse with if you have issues with. That's the best security policy you can buy when buying a high-end watch. And when in doubt, always take it to an AD or somebody who's an authorized expert on that watch who's going to take the case back off and is going to look at every single detail of that watch. Okay? All that said, I do think there's some good points on this video, and I do think it will help you identify a lot of the poor quality fakes out there. All right, I'm done interrupting myself, and I'm done lecturing you, so thank you all for this little rant. Back to whatever I was saying. Back to the video. Uh, video today is a little different. We're going to look at a real Rolex versus a fake Rolex. I've done these in the past. Those videos weren't that great. This one I think is better, but it's still not quite where I want it to be. And a couple things before we get started. Um, the fake Rolex doesn't belong to me. It's not for sale. I don't support fake Rolexes. I'll put a link below in the description to a video I made on that. Um, so anybody that wants to post advertisements in the comments about fakes they're selling, I'm gonna delete you. I, I don't support fakes. I want nothing to do with them. A Couple other things. This is not a great quality fake. Um, I know there are good ones out there. This one isn't. These, however, are the most common ones out there. And again, since I don't buy fakes, this is what I had to work with. I think hopefully you guys will still find some value in the video. Um, this was filmed under circumstances that I didn't have a lot of control over. Um, these were not my watches. This was not my normal camera, and I was very rushed for time. Some things I really didn't get to talk about. Um, I didn't really get to talk about the quality of the etching on the case back, excuse me, on the, uh, the, the case itself where the model number and the serial number are. Here's an example of a Rolex I used to own. Something you always want to look at is the quality of the model printing and the serial number printing. I didn't get to talk about the A's on the dial. The A in Submariner and actually all Rolex A's have a flat point on top. You'll notice on the fake they actually come to a point which is inaccurate. I didn't get to talk about the laser etched crowns as well, which on modern Rolex is a feature you can see a laser etched crown typically around 6 o'clock in certain light. On the fake, you'll notice it actually shows up on all kinds of light, which is inaccurate. Didn't get a chance to talk about that either. Apologize about that. 
that is just a feature to modern Rolexes. Vintage ones didn't have that. Um, there's so many different ways to tell a fake from a real, and it all depends on the quality of the fake you're looking at and the model you're comparing it to. At the end of the day, if you know what a real Rolex looks and feels like, especially the model you're looking at, that's your best armament against not buying a fake. So there's way too many points to cover, but at the end of the day, hopefully the takeaway you guys will all get from this video is that when you've held a lot of real Rolexes, you'll just have that sense of their precision and their quality and their craftsmanship, and you'll just know when something is off. So with all that said, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and let's go ahead and jump to the video. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get this review kicked off with a real Rolex. And the first thing I want you to pay attention to is look how crisp and clear all the printing is on the dial. Look how beautiful the light picks up on the writing. Look how beautiful the Cyclops illuminates the date. It just picks it up. You have great magnification. It's extremely legible. It's bright. Everything just looks very crisp is probably the best word that I can use to describe it and very clean and clear. Uh, I want you to contrast that with here with this fake here. And the first thing you notice is look how dull the date window looks. It just looks dark and kind of haggard. And look at, again, the font. The font doesn't really stand out. It's kind of just a dark matte. The, uh, the font itself isn't uh, all that pretty. You can tell that it's not quite correct. And again, there's just nothing bespoke about it. It isn't, doesn't stand out as much, doesn't look as crisp or as clear. I mean, let's just go back to the real one here for a sec. Again, look at that. The, uh, the font on the real one almost just kind of glows. I mean, look how beautifully legible that is. And look how pretty the printing is. I mean, you can just tell the precision that's gone into this dial. And again, look how easy it is to read that date. That date window, that date aperture is perfect. And again, contrast that here with the fake. The date window is dark and dull. Um, it's just night and day different. And then also, you'll notice even every little bit and piece, uh, the whole precision of a real Rolex is just something that the fakes just don't quite get. Even on the crown and the way the crown works, um, when we unscrew the crown, um, first I want you guys to take a look at that, uh, listen to that beautiful sound that it makes as you wind it. And you can also notice there too where my finger is, there's that great little gasket right there. That's part of the trip lock seal for the crown for water tightness, but um, everything is very, really kind of crisp is the other again kind I of keep using that word especially when you're even changing the dates everything just kind of clicks in with precision it just feels like a very high quality piece you can just tell that this thing is well put together um, and of course pulling all the way out you get hacking as well um, but the entire way that the crown works and the functions of the crown it just comes off as something that's been very well engineered you feel the quality as you manipulate it um, you know when you contrast that with our little fake over here uh, wow, look at the size of those crown guards on the fake on the right. Those things are enormous. I, uh, I didn't really notice that before. You can also see the golds coming off on the crown as well on the fake, but wow, I didn't realize those crown guards where my finger is right there, those things are way too thick. They are enormous. Um, but let's go ahead and let's uh, play with the crown on this guy as well. And um, immediately I can just kind of feel it's not the same. And actually, you know what? Even the seal looks tiny. Let's compare it. See, this is the way. Let's go ahead and compare these two with the seals and the crowns side by side so you guys can see how they're supposed to look. So on the bottom is the genuine Rolex. And I want you to look at the ratio of the crown guards to the crown. And then look at this fake here. I mean, the crown guards look like they're like crowding out the crown itself. The proportions are just off. Um, and you can also see that the crown itself sits on a wider stem, although, again, it's apologize. It's a little hard to see from this. but. Um, wow, I didn't even realize how much that was off. Um, but even as you wind it, it just it feels kind of gritty. You know, you can just tell that it's a low quality movement. It just, it's not, doesn't feel nice. And let's go ahead and see if I can change the date here. Oh, look at, look at the printing on the date too. You can just tell it almost looks like some of the numbers have smeared. Um, but just the whole way it's clicking into the different dates, it's just, you know, it's 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 not a Rolex. It feels like a very cheaply made watch. It's uh, yeah, it's just nasty. It's hacking. Not surprising. So this one hacks as well. But uh, yeah, you can just tell whatever this movement is they put in here. This is not a high quality movement. All the actions of this crown just give away the fact that this is a very cheaply made movement. And um, this is supposed to be unidirectional bezel too. Obviously, it's slipping a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just again, I mean, even from this angle, you can tell just the monumental difference in quality between the real Rolex on the left and the fake one on the right. It's uh, really easy to see. 
And if I want to go ahead and take a look at the bracelet, here's the bracelet on the real one. This is what a real Rolex 16613 bracelet should look like. They all have a diver's extension, which is here. This is so you can fit it over a wetsuit, although this is not a watch I would ever go diving with. But I want you to pay close attention to There's a lot of scrapes and scratches on this bracelet, but I want you to know where they are scratched. Um, and again, the light can play a little bit of a trick on you here. Where the scratch is, and it's lighter, it's actually still gold, because it's a solid gold link. And, and I'll let me kind of rotate the bracelet around a little bit. But uh, as I do that, I just want you to pay attention. Let me snap this back into place here. And um, actually, too, just let's look at the clasp itself real quick. This is the old style flip fold over clasp, and it has a safety right there. Um, but yeah, as we look at the bracelet itself, again, there's, this thing's been scratched up. It's seen some desk diving duty. Um, but let's go ahead and compare it to the bracelet on this fake over here. And uh, I'm willing to bet you're going to see some stainless steel shining through this fake from gold links. Yeah, just nosed a little bit there. Oh wow, yeah, there you go. See that? Look at the links. See on the center of the links, you can see stainless steel shining underneath where the gold's worn off. Um, that Rolex logo looks too big too. Yeah, it is. So see on the left is the real Rolex bracelet, on the right is the fake. Look how much oversized the crown is on the fake Rolex. It's just, it's not correct at all. Um, let's go ahead and see how this thing works out. And the, uh, huh, that doesn't look great either. Um, this thing has a diving extension, which is interesting. Um, looks very similar to the real thing, so they, they definitely made that effort. You can see again, gold's worn off, and it's uh, you know definitely starting to show through the stainless steel. Uh, just even holding this thing, it just it doesn't feel quality at all. It just feels wrong. Um, but looking at the, the stamped clasp, everything on this thing just, you know, it's just one of those things you can just, if you've held a lot of Rolexes, you'll know instantly this is not a real Rolex. And yeah, just the dial, it's just, it, it gives it away as not a correct watch. Um, you know, granted, you know, these older Rolexes, they don't feel terrific either, if I'm totally honest with you. But uh, you can definitely tell that this watch, despite, you know, the cheap foldover, was made with precision. Um, and again, that bracelet, there's lots of scratches on it, but underneath the scratches, you're still looking at solid gold, because those center links are solid 18 karat gold. You're not going to see any stainless steel sticking out through the middle of the links. Yeah, I mean, again, tons of scratches, and again, this lighting might be a little tricky to see, but uh, it, every place you see a scratch, there's gold shining through underneath it. There's no stainless steel popping through there. And again, the dial is just super legible. Everything is super crisp, super clear. Even that date, you can read it from here, crystal clear. You know, again, versus the fake, look how dull and dark the fake looks on the right in comparison to the real on the left. I mean, again, it's, it's night and day difference. Um, it's just, even holding the fake is really lightweight. The real ones feel substantially more heavier. I should have weighed these things. Something didn't occur to me. So, I grant you guys this is not the best quality fake. In fact, it's not a good quality fake at all. But, you know, when you fold a bunch of Rolexes, even if it's a good quality fake, you'll actually, you will notice a difference. And while even the thickness on the fake on the right's wrong. Um, yeah, even the, okay, the trip block crowns uh, are wrong too. The, the real one on the left, you can see the crown proportion to the dots is what it should be. Obviously, the fake is a little bit is a little bit off. And again, look at those crown guards on the fake on the right. They're just way too large. They're not accurate at all. It's, uh, and just to give you a sense, too, here's my GMT Master 2. I just want to show you that, again, all Rolexes, again, look how crisp and clear they are to read from this distance. Again, you, the date font is just, you know, it, it, it's bright, it's clear, it's easy to read. The, uh, the printing on the dial, again, is just very easy to read. It's very crisp. And again, versus this fake, it just looks dull. And even in comparison, again, to my GMT Master, again, night and day. GMT Master, again, bright, crisp, clear font, easy to read date aperture. The fake is just, again, dull. Um, so there you go guys, again, the, the fake here is not a great quality one, but these are all things that if you spend a lot of time holding real Rolexes, you'll just pick up on that even the good fakes don't have quite the same feel to them. 
All right, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. Really appreciate you guys watching the video. Again, not quite the quality that I'd hoped for, but hopefully you guys still found it valuable. As always, I am so blessed for your support and this channel keeps growing and I appreciate you guys so much for that. If you think my channel would be helpful for others to watch, please help spread the word. Uh, links to social media are below. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the link to my video on fake watches and why I don't support them is below. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe so I can catch you on the next video. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.